Narc Neighbours Part 2. Watch the first part of the video if you haven't watched it yet. I'm going to go deeper into some sections of the first part of the video. I hope you are all doing well and feeling good. I hope that you have been enjoying my recent videos. Please like and subscribe. Share your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And please share the videos with other people who you believe it may help. Narc neighbours seem to base their existence off your acknowledgement or perception of them. They have to be seen and heard at all times, just to feel like they exist. They have to be noticed. They see you as being superior to them in some way. They may believe that you have a better home or car. You may make more money than they do. You may have a better lifestyle. They could be envious of your family and what they have. This has created their motive to target you and cause disruption. This is what drives them to do the things that they do. You may have talked to them just a few times. In some cases, you may never have talked to them. You may not even know who they are. And yet they believe that they know so much about you. They may know things about your family. They may know things about the places you go to and what time you go there. They will even drop a subtle hint about this if you have a conversation. Or they will leave an object somewhere where you might see it. Just to let you know that they know where you are going or what you are going to be doing. It makes them feel in control of you. Narcissists have to dominate the environment. It distracts them from how helpless and worthless they really feel. They use all of these power and control tactics, abuse and manipulation as a ways of regulating their emotions. They believe it is beneficial to their mental health and emotional stability. It's like therapy to them. And it might provide temporary relief from all of the negative feelings they would otherwise have to endure. But that's only for a limited time. Soon enough, they will go back to feeling how they usually feel. All of the abuse and manipulative tactics are used as a distraction, a coping mechanism, a defense mechanism and an adaptation to the hostile environment they experienced in childhood. They have to distract themselves. They cannot be alone with their own thoughts, it's too painful for them. They have an inner critic that constantly tells them how useless, worthless and insignificant they are. Engaging in these types of behaviors makes them feel powerful and in control. It makes them feel as though they are worth something. The narc neighbor usually has nothing of any value or significance going on in their lives. But then they find an opportunity to stalk and study someone. It makes them feel special, as though they actually have something to offer, something to do. It takes the focus off their otherwise boring and miserable lives. It provides them with narcissistic supply and a mild sense of excitement for a limited time. It gives them a sense of power and control. It validates their existence and gives purpose to their lives. You may want nothing to do with them, but in their minds, they have created this fantasy and delusion of you. They have been studying you and believe that they know you so well. In their minds, you are now a significant part of their life. Because of this, they feel comfortable stalking you 
and watching everything you are doing. They feel as though they are entitled to your time and energy, even though you want nothing to do with them. Narcissists are self-absorbed, they have a sense of entitlement. It doesn't matter what you want or don't want. This is why many narcissists are rapists, child molesters and murderers. In these cases, they really believe that they are entitled to your body, your child's body and even own the rights to your life. It's just something they can take as they please. Because you are an extension of them. You are a part of them. You are an object, a tool used to serve them and meet their sick needs. At the same time, they also claim to hate you so much. They hate everything you do. They hate everything you stand for, everything you believe in. Yet they keep checking in on what you are doing. This is a clear identification of narcissism. Imagine you drink a glass of milk and have an allergic reaction. You realize that you are lactose intolerant. You are not going to drink that milk again. Imagine there is a TV show or movie on TV that you do not like. You are going to change the TV channel. You are not going to continue watching it. Anything you consume, which you then realize isn't good for you or realize you don't like it, you are not going to con continue consuming it. This is where we realize how different we are from these people. Because even though narc neighbors claim to hate a person and profess that they, they are no good for them, they will still continue to engage with them in conversation or watch them from afar, stalk them. Which means that they are conflicting with their own beliefs. They have cognitive dissonance. This is why you should never take them seriously or trust anything they say. Their opinions are invalid and not credible because the very things that they claim are so bad or they claim to hate are the very things that they spend most of their time around. This is bordering on psychotic behavior. If we put ourselves in their shoes and we see ourselves as these, these bad people who are no good for them. We are not going to continue to engage or stalk and watch because we are functional and logical people. The narc neighbor's actions are not based on anything functional or logical. They are based on their own weak and fragile emotions. Everything they do or say is emotionally based and their emotions are like their weakest link because their emotional development remains at that of a child. Yet everything they do or say is based on these emotions. It's a formula for chaos and drama. And this is why nothing ever gets resolved. You can't resolve anything when you have weak, fragile emotions. Resolution requires both parties to be mature, logical and understanding. Since they don't have the emotional capabilities to have a resolution, it never ends. It becomes an obsession to them, an addiction. They can't let it go because they don't know how. They never learned how to resolve anything. So it becomes an endless fight. They will stalk and watch you for years as long as they are alive. They continue to go back to the very person that they claim to hate, which only gives them more ammunition to hate you and it feeds their obsession even more. 
It leaves them stuck in this endless cycle of trying to destroy you and ruin your life. Every time they try to forget about you and move on with their lives, there is always something triggering in their minds. Telling them to check in on what you are doing. They are always wondering what they might be missing. And this is why they can never leave you alone. Many narc neighbors are even involved in criminal operations. I have heard stories where a victim's child went to spend time with a narc neighbor's child in their home. The child found a room in the narc neighbor's home full of monitors which displayed every room in her house. The victim later noticed through the window that the narc neighbor was sitting on a chair in that room watching all of those monitors. Another situation a victim's five-year-old daughter was targeted by electronic weapons. The victim entered her daughter's room one night to find her masturbating. Although she was confident that her daughter had not seen or heard anything sexual on TV or in school. There really is no low that these people won't go to. They are sick, twisted people who engage in all kinds of evil behaviors. With everything we know, we can't help to think that they are demonically possessed. And yet everything we know about them is only the tip of the iceberg. There is so much we don't know. They claim that they do not like or support you in any way. Yet they are so obsessed with you and can stalk you for years. There is clearly something very wrong with them. Because normal and mostly healthy people would never operate in that way. If you hate a TV show, you don't keep watching it again and again. These individuals claim to hate you, yet they can't leave you alone. This is psychotic behavior. No normal emotionally healthy person would ever see someone to be so significant in their lives that they have to stalk and watch them every day. Especially when the person wants nothing to do with them. Normal emotionally healthy people will understand early on and then leave you alone. They will not keep coming back to someone they claim to hate so much. Narc neighbors cannot take rejection. They have to reject you. If you make it clear that you want nothing to do with them, they can't just leave you alone. It causes a narcissistic injury. They become completely obsessed with you and cannot leave you alone. It becomes an addiction to them. Like a cocaine addict staring at a line of cocaine, knowing all too well that it's not going to do them any good. They can't help but to snort that line just like the narc neighbor. They know that you conflict with each other. They know that you are no good for them, yet they will still consume you. They are entertaining these dysfunctional thoughts and then acting on their weak, unstable emotions every time they sneak around and watch what you are doing, it excites them. 
it releases the dopamine neurotransmitter within their brains. It's all based on their weak, unstable emotions. Negative emotions such as hate, anger, envy and jealousy. These are emotions you should never act on. Nothing good can ever come out, out of acting on these negative emotions. Stalking has become a global issue. I think this is caused during their childhood where they felt neglected by their parents, friends or someone else in their environment. They were never taught how to deal with rejection and they clearly failed to figure it out on their own. Every time they are rejected, they can't just let it go. It takes them back to that traumatic event of re rejection or neglect that they experienced as children. Now when they experience rejection or it causes a narcissistic injury, they become obsessed and they can't leave you alone. They have to stalk you and watch everything you are doing. They were also never taught about boundaries when they were children. Their boundaries were never respected, so now they don't respect yours. Their inner critic makes it impossible for them to ever truly feel respected by anyone. So how could they ever respect you? You cannot truly respect someone else until you learn to respect yourself. And I think this fact shows how little respect they have for themselves in everything they do. They might feel guilty at first, but the more they do it, the more it desensitizes their guilt. But it's not as easy to desensitize Shame. Shame is always there. And although they spend their lives doing everything they can to avoid shame, it continues to grow within them. It continues to affect every aspect of their lives. It's like these people are volunta voluntarily engaging in behavior which gradually creates a cycle psychopathic personality disorder. The more they do it, the more normal it becomes to them. They have basically created their own psychopath training program for themselves. <laughs>